Well, that's what I look like now. At some point you have to admit that you don't have enough hair on your head to keep your own and the wig just was not cutting it for me. Anyway, today we're gonna talk about web search. Web search is in a weird place right now. On the one hand, the major providers like Google and Bing are getting worse by the day. But on the other hand, the alternative providers either depend on these big tech companies for their results, or they tend to still not be as accomplished as the big players, even in their current worsening state. So what can you do to actually get some decent, workable search results, apart from appending Reddit at the end of all of your queries to actually get some human written stuff? Well, we'll look at ways to sort of fix Google. And also we'll look at alternatives, why they can be good in some areas, and why they can be disappointing in others. And of course, that's assuming you don't like the direction search is going towards currently, which is everything is a pre-digested, badly written and misinformed AI answer, or everything is AI generated articles. If you like this direction, then I guess you can skip the video. But if you don't, please don't skip this segue to our sponsor. Thanks to Tuxcare for sponsoring this video. Tuxcare offers state-of-the-art solutions to keep your open source system secure thanks to its rebootless patching tools, available on many different Linux distros. They also deliver long-term support for older open source products with their endless lifecycle support services, which give you security patches for end-of-life Linux distros, software languages, and frameworks like Spring, .NET, and Apache Tomcat. And Tuxcare also supports Alma Linux, the community-owned Red Hat Enterprise Linux compatible distro that many organizations have chosen as a replacement for CentOS. This support turns Alma Linux into an enterprise-optimized powerhouse for all organizations. Not only does it include access to experts, rebootless patching, and security hardening, but it also features a complete set of FIPS validated Alma Linux packages, which includes the kernel, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, NSS, and LibCrypt. These will let you comply with the certifications needed to work with US and Canadian federal agencies, government contractors, or companies providing services to the US federal government. All you have to do is to keep your system updated through Tuxcare's repos and you'll stay FIPS 140-3 compliant. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So I don't think I'm teaching you anything when I'm telling you that Google search and Bing as well have been getting worse and worse. I'm not just talking about the enormous amount of sponsored links everywhere, of ads or of shopping products, of Google products that are being pushed first. I can't really criticize anyone, even a big tech company, for having deals and ads everywhere. That's how I make a living. It doesn't help me keep hair on my head, but at least it puts food on the table, so it would be pretty hypocritical of me to criticize that. What Google search is losing is accuracy. The pre-made snippets that they display often don't refer to what you're looking for. They're generally related to it, but they're not exact when you're searching for specific things. The AI summaries that they're starting to add, well, we all know AI isn't really reliable and you have to fact check literally everything it says. So it doesn't quite save any time compared to a regular search because you would still have to fact check what you looked for. There's also the fact that consumer reviews are now pretty much garbage generated by review farms. The fact that SEO hacking has made trying to appear in the top results a game and a full industry. And much like regular hacking, Google can only play catch up. They can never really beat the manipulations that websites engage in. And that's compounded by the current trends in terms of content. You have a lot of AI generated slop, a lot of articles that could have been one word and very verbose paragraphs that just tell you nothing like most of my videos. It is all a mess. And this results in having to type Reddit at the end of your query to get some actual answers written by some actual people. However debatable these answers can be depending on the topic. I'm someone who never really used Reddit much, but I started doing that as well because, well, the results in a lot of search engines are just pretty much garbage now. So what can you do about it? Well, we'll look at a few tips to improve Google results and also add a few alternatives, but things are still pretty bleak. So if you want to fight the AI onslaught that is ruining most searches, there is something that you can do. Google started adding AI results to the top of some searches with pre-digested answers that loosely match your query, often adding some nice little hallucinations and misinformation in there. Because the I in AI stands for incompetence currently. 
So if you still want to use Google search because everything else is for your use case not as good, you can at least create a search shortcut that removes a bunch of crap Google ads. To do so, you need to add a custom search engine to your web browser. Most browsers let you do that. In Firefox and its forks, for example, you can go to the settings, then search, then at the bottom, you can add a search shortcut that uses the URL written on screen, which is also in the description of the video. You can also add that to a Chromium-based browser by entering another string, also in the video's description, in their search settings as a new search engine. You can make that new engine the default in your settings, and when you're using it, it will remove all AI results and default to the web tab instead of the all tab of Google search, so you only get web pages and none of the extra crap. Now, if this isn't enough to restore Google to a workable state for you, then maybe it's time to look at alternatives. And that's what we're going to do now. So the search engine I currently use myself is DuckDuckGo. The name is kind of dumb, the logo isn't really fantastic, but it's the search engine that, at least in French and English, tends to give me the best results. It also has a slew of options that let you disable a lot of the stuff you might not want from a search engine. It has AI built in, but you can remove that. It has ads, but you can disable them. You don't like the style sheet and the look, you can change that easily enough as well. You can even disable the instant answers that provide pre-digested snippets, even if those aren't AI generated. On top of that, you have bangs, as in you can type an exclamation point and a string of letter, and you get results from another search engine or website. If you want only Reddit stuff, type exclamation point, are. If you want to go back to Google results, because this specific query didn't give you anything you wanted, type exclamation point G. And also you can say that you banged Google or Wikipedia, which is always kind of fun to say. Now, DuckDuckGo doesn't have their own search index. They use Bing search APIs quite a lot, and this means that they might in the future have a problem, because Microsoft is shutting down this API. They're keeping existing contracts in place for big customers like DuckDuckGo, but who knows how long it will last. Since there is a new open web index being launched in the EU, maybe they'll pivot to that, maybe there's hope, but we don't yet know if this index is actually any good, if it's complete, and if it's really usable by a search engine to replace something like the Bing search API, so we'll have to see. There is hope, but right now it's mostly Bing results that are re-ranked by DuckDuckGo themselves. Now, the previous one that I used was Ecosia. It also uses Bing quite a lot for their results, but they are trying to move towards their own index as well. The engine is nice. It gives accurate results, and if you have ads turned on, they will plant trees with the money that they get. Although, how efficient this is depends on who they contract that out to. They seem to use a lot of various different organizations that plant trees locally in places where it could actually make a difference, with tree species that could actually make a difference, but it's hard to tell with that stuff. Ecosia also has the equivalent of bangs. You use them with a hashtag symbol and then a letter instead of the exclamation mark. I used Ecosia for a long while and I liked it, but I found DuckDuckGo gave me better results overall. Now, if you like the concept of the Fediverse, Mastodon, PeerTube, and all that jazz, you might also like SearchNG, or SERXNG. It's a federated meta search engine, meaning it's decentralized and hosted through several instances, either private for your own use and no one else's, or public where you can access the engine, but you will need to ensure that this instance doesn't log stuff. You can have to trust the person or organization hosting it. Much like with every other search engine though, a lot of the alternatives I'm presenting here said that they don't log anything, they don't collect personal info, they don't save your searches, but you have to trust them to not do that. Search NG aggregates results from Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and Quant, and a lot of other engines, and all the private data that might be in the queries is stripped from those uh, when they pass those queries to the engines to get the actual results. You can also enable or disable the engines you don't want to use in your searches. Response times can vary depending on the instance you picked, but the interface is nice enough, and it's one of the rare things that you can self-host if you want. It can be the ultimate, I want to be in control experience because, well, you decide where you host it, on which server, which search engines you want to use or not use, and you decide if you keep your own personal data or not. The problem is, 
if you only send all of those queries to Google, Bing and others through one server with one user, they will very easily know that it's one single person making all these queries and they might start tailoring your results to you or have access to some information about your searches. So it's a trade-off between using a public instance but having to trust the one hosting those or building your own but then you're not that private. Now if you use the Brave browser you might also know about their search engine which is called Brave Search. It's an interesting one because it's a very rare case of an engine with its own index. They don't depend on Google or Bing for results. They use their own index entirely as far as I could find at least including for images and videos. They do have some AI crap baked in so that's a drawback but you can disable that in the engine settings if you don't want to use it. The results are more hit or miss than DuckDuckGo for my own use case. There are some moments where I just did not get anything useful when I tried it out. Now, to be clear, other search engines that depend on Bing or Google generally anonymize all the queries so they don't pass any personal info or identifiable information to Google or Bing. But using the very own index from Brave means that nothing goes to Google or Bing, which might be important to you. Now Brave is not a company I particularly like. Uh, their stance on crypto, on AI and stuff like that is not to my liking. I also have my issues with their founder, so I personally won't use anything coming from Brave. But if that's not a problem for you and you really don't want to depend on Google or Bing at all, then it's kind of your only turnkey solution that is entirely free of charge. Because yes, there are paid for search engines like Kagi or Kaji, not sure how you pronounce it. I'm gonna say Kagi. I haven't used it myself, but I've heard stories that go in two directions. Some Patreon supporters of mine and viewers of mine told me it was great and they love it. Some others said that the company seems a bit all over the place with questionable decisions, with focus on AI on a web browser, which you might have heard of, it's called Orion, and it's coming to Linux, with potential email services in the works for a very small company with very few developers. I've seen indications that they also heavily rely on Yandex for their results, which is a Russian search engine, very much beholden to the current Russian government, so that might be a red flag as well in terms of the results you get and what is censored. Personal Personally, I think there are a bit too many mentions of Kagi being very hand wavy about all of that stuff, overextending themselves, relying on Yandex and stuff like that. That's enough for me to not trust it, but it exists, it is an alternative and you get to make the choice if that's important for you or not. Then you have Mojik, a UK based search engine focused on privacy. They have their own index as well, meaning they don't use Bing and Google. So at least you're not suffering from the potential biases that these engines implement. There's no tracking, you can get rid of the pre-made summaries from Wikipedia, and it's reasonably fast. Results though can be hit or miss because it's a smaller project. In my limited testing, it performed relatively poorly on some searches and very well on others. It is funded by private investors, but apparently the founder retains complete control over the project. I'll try and use it a bit more. I only did limited testing for this video. It seems like an interesting project, but the results were not up to snuff when compared to what I could get for at least what I searched for on DuckDuckGo. Now, there are other options that I wouldn't personally trust myself. First is Start Page. I even used to work with them with a few sponsorships back in the day. They're basically using entirely Google results, but with more privacy. However, they've now been bought by System One. It's an ad tech company that builds targeted ad platforms. There's been no indication that Startpage has to send them any personal or private data, but it is still a bit of a concern in my book. This ad tech company apparently has a majority stake in Startpage, but the founders of Startpage apparently have the ability to reject any technical change that could impact users' privacy, so who knows? It is enough of a red flag for me that I wouldn't use it or recommend it for now. There's also Quant. It's a French search engine that also doesn't store your search data either. And they've teamed up with Ecosia to try and build an index shared by both engines. But for now, Quant still uses big tech providers mostly. And it actually received a notice recently from the French privacy watchdog because they didn't really conform to their GDPR obligations. They do collect some amount of personal data through queries and they do transmit some of that to Microsoft through Bing searches. Quant didn't declare that or put in place the tools users needed to manage that. They since fixed the issue, but still. 
Again, not necessarily something I would use right now. Too many red flags around it. Now, there might be other search engines that I'm not aware of or I didn't try, but the TLDR is you can either keep using Google and try to remove the crap you don't want, but the results are slowly being gamed by various websites and the focus of Google on AI means things are unlikely to improve in the future unless current AI large language models actually get good at giving you accurate results and fact-checking themselves, which when you look at recent models, it seems like they hallucinate more instead of less, so I wouldn't be too optimistic about this. If Google is just not good enough for you, then you can use a search engine that uses results from them or from Bing, like DuckDuckGo, and you'll get those results but ranked with a different algorithm. Meaning that, sure, it's still what Google or Bing indexed, so you're not getting anything that those engines deem unworthy of them, but at least they're ranked differently and you might get better results than just using natively Google or Bing. Ultimately, though, you're still beholden to what these companies think is worthy of being indexed. Or you can try an engine that has their own index, like Brave or Mojik, but in my experience, results aren't necessarily as good. So it's still a bit of a dilemma. On the one hand, you have Google, the elephant in the room, which is slowly getting worse and worse, definitely not focused on your privacy, but definitely focused on AI, which is a direction I think a lot of us don't really like. On the other hand, you have alternatives that are either beholden to these search engines or not beholden to them, but in that latter cases, they are still not as good, in my experience, as the worsening state of Google. Of course, this all depends on the language you search in. Different search engines will give you better or worse results depending on the language you use. And it also depends on the type of stuff you look for. I've been told that, for example, DuckDuckGo isn't that great for really technical searches, stuff related to development. But for my own current searches that are just general web information gathering, it performs better than Google. So your mileage may vary. You basically only have to try things out a little bit and keep using the tool that you want. Search engines are that, they're tools, and you have to find the balance that you want to strike between privacy, AI, pre-digested answers, and results quality. Mine, for now, has landed on DuckDuckGo after a while of using Ecosia, but it might change in the future depending on the new index that they decide to go with, if they change from Bing, or depending on how other search engines evolve. Anyway, this will conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed listening to it or watching it. And I'll leave you on this segue to our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They're a really fantastic company that sells laptops and desktops with Linux pre-installed. They have a big range of computers that you can choose from with a lot of options for the CPU, the GPU, the amount of RAM. Generally, nothing is soldered, although they do have some models where it is, so do check that out. And they also have plenty of customization options for keyboard layouts, for even your own logo engraved on your laptop. I only use their computers these days. Everything I do on this channel, my podcast, everything is done on one of their laptops and all my gaming needs are served by one of their desktops. Check out the link in the description to learn more about Tuxedo. They're really, really nice. Anyway, thank you all for watching. You know where all the usual YouTube buttons are and why you should click them. And if you want to support the channel, there are links in the description as well. Thanks for watching and goodbye.